You're listening to the Voice of Your Brand podcast. In today's episode, get ready to cycle sync your business and your life with Renee Fick. That's coming up next. Ready to go behind the scenes and learn what it really takes to stand out as the voice of your brand? I'm Katherine Beck voice actor and voice coach. And after 20 years of being the voice of other brands, I'm here to show you how your voice is your most powerful tool to creating the impact, influence, and income you desire. The world is your global stage. So get ready to up-level your voice and your personal brand. This is the Voice of Your Brand podcast. Welcome back to the podcast, and I am so excited to share this podcast episode with you because Renee was one of the first members of my voice program, so we have been on a wonderful journey together as both of our businesses have taken off, and I love what she does, and I've loved watching her business grow, and it's such an important conversation for us women to have, so I thought we should tune in and talk about it on the podcast. Now, Renee helps women optimize their time and their energy through unlocking Locking the power in their cycle. And through her method, she helps women balance the demands of life and make a bigger impact and get bigger results without adding more stress and needing more time. We talked about creating content around your cycle and how that impacts your voice and showing up. It was such a great conversation. So without further ado, let's roll that interview. Welcome, Renee, to the podcast. It's so good to have you here, and I'm so excited to talk with you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and I am so thrilled to be here. I know you and I have gone back, and I'm just so excited to be able to come on here and talk with you. Yeah, so Renee and I met, uh, I guess, about a year or so ago. We're in the same group coaching program, and uh, you were part of my voice program, my beta Mm -hmm. launch of it, which was really exciting, and it was a small group of you all, and it was really wonderful to work with you and see you progress through that program, as well as just within seeing you progress in the past year. And I wanted to bring you on because I really love the idea of speaking with entrepreneurs who have found their voice in their business. And I have definitely seen that of you. So why don't we just start with what you do just to let the listeners know a little bit about who you are and and we'll go Mm -hmm. from there. Yeah. Well, okay. So a little bit about me. Yeah. My journey has been quite a bit (laughs) in terms of finding my voice and that whole process. I think I had started as an entrepreneur about five, six years ago with this dream and this passion to build something that was my own. I was not working for somebody else because I had gone down that, that hole, that rabbit hole of working a nine to five, going down what I thought was my dream job, And then my husband got diagnosed with a brain tumor and really having that stark realization of you only live once, like you only get this one shot. Is this really what you want to be doing every single day? So I launched into entrepreneurship and have fumbled my way through it for the last five or six years, really trying to find that thing that felt like it worked for me. And Along the journey, I felt like I got to this place. I really just burnt out, like hustling and trying and pushing and shoving. And at some point in that journey, I discovered how women are different than men in terms of how we function just in the day to day. Our hormones are so different and how that really impacts the way we show up. And so I started slowly integrating it into my business and what I was doing behind the scenes. And like you said, probably about a year ago, I started talking with some people and just sharing what I was doing like behind the scenes. And they were like, oh my gosh, this is life-changing. This is so revolutionary. Like we need to know more about this. And so I slowly started pivoting and sharing more and more about that. And it really has been this whole journey of watching how this voice, like determining and finding my voice and what I really wanted to share. And I like kick myself that I didn't do it five, six years ago. Like it took me that long to figure it out. And, but just to be in this place now and feel like it feels so in alignment, it feels so good. And to know it's making such a huge difference for the clients that I work with and changing the way they see time, they see their business, see how they use their voice, like see everything like that. And to just be on 
on that journey. So that is my last six years in what, 30 seconds or two a minute or however yeah, long it took me to do that. That's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. Very concise and, and well-spoken. I might add. Well spoken. Thanks. I have a, I have a nice coach, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, it's the journey and it's yeah. been the exact same for me. You know, I could kick myself as well and go, well, God, why, why have I struggled so much in my entrepreneur journey? But it's always leading you to something greater. And yes. that's, what's really exciting. And it's been so exciting to see with you and you've got such a, uh, an energy shift. You, mm-hmm. you, now that you're in alignment, you're so much lighter, happier, and it shows. Yeah. When yeah, you're, I, oh, I was just going to say, like, okay. whenever you're producing content, you're putting things out there. I literally can see and hear a difference in you mm-hmm. from when I first met you to now. Yeah. Well, and it's so true. I was talking with a client this morning about she was looking at a new avenue in her business and things. And she was, you know, I, I want to learn from these people and figure out like if it's working for them and if they like it. And I was like, girl, there is a million people doing a million different things. And until you find the one right thing for you or multiple things for you, but if it's not working for you, it doesn't matter if it's successful for anybody else. And I think that that is the key thing is finding that thing that really lights you up. And I tried, I was checking all the boxes, doing all the things that all the entrepreneurs say is working and, you know, a freebie seeker in the all the things, right? Like you check every webinar, you go to every live training, you do every little thing looking for that one golden nugget that's going to make the biggest difference. And it really, I think it comes back down to that is like finding that thing that really lights you up, makes you feel really good because then it becomes no brainer to talk about it. Like you said, the energy shifts, like everybody can feel that when you're just like checking the boxes, they, they feel that too. So what was that moment for you? When did you, when did it click and realize that, oh, Mm. yeah, I I think for me, it really was in this moment of, I was watching other people in the same niche that I was in and they were talking and posting things online and I was watching it and I had this stark realization of like, I don't want to post and talk about that. Like what they're talking about, I could create content like that. I could do it. I could make it look really pretty and nice like they're doing it. I just don't want to. I don't want to talk about that anymore. And I think that was the the moment that I realized like what I'm doing is just checking the boxes. It's just looking at like, how can I make this successful? Not necessarily is this really truly in alignment for me? And so I think that was the moment of, I need to shed this and let this go. And it came just, I don't think it was coincidence, but it came coincidentally at the same time as more and more and more people were asking me like what I was doing differently in terms of my time and how I was structuring where I scheduled things in my business and how I was operating on this back end using more of the feminine cycle that then I just started sharing it and talking about it. And when that sort of got more and more people's interest, I think that was when I was like, okay, this is what I want to talk about. So, but I think it was that realization of, I just don't want to be talking about this anymore. I don't want to do it. And I was forcing myself to do it, which I think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people are showing up on social media, just forcing themselves to talk about stuff because we're supposed to post what, like eight times a day on TikTok or whatever, two, three times a day on Instagram. It's just, it's so much, so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's exhausting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I find that I can do that for like a few days and then I crash and burn. Mm-hmm. Is that yeah. common, you think? Um, I do. And I also think that that's partly like, that's where my zone has become in terms of looking at the feminine cycle and how, we have this, we're getting this message from everybody that we need to be consistent. We need to show up on social media consistently. And most women are not designed to really show up consistently. We have estrogen and progesterone are very different in the way they function for women versus the way men function with testosterone. 
which has testosterone has a 24 hour like replenish versus women have that more monthly cycle and estrogen and progesterone are very different in how we feel. And so what I see happen a lot with women is they feel really good. They feel really on top of it. They're recording tons of video. They're recording tons of reels and they're showing up on the podcast and they feel like they're on top of the world and everything's going great and smooth. And then a week later, they don't want to show up on social media at all. They want to curl up under a blanket. They don't want to do a podcast. Like they don't want to work at all. They're full of self-doubt and limiting beliefs and all these fears of I suck. And oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that. And it just becomes a spiral when in reality, those two stark differences are really just your hormones at play. And so when you start to know that you can start to plan according to it. So batching more of your content, doing more of your podcasts, doing more of your voice-based stuff in that time when you're feeling on top of it, when your world is feeling great and you're feeling confident and you feel powerful. And then in those times when you're not feeling that, then you focus on different tasks. You do different things in your business. So it's taking this pressure off of showing up consistently in the same sense of, I'm just going to record something. I'm going to show up. I'm going to post every single day and becomes this element of how can I operate more in a cycle and more in this batching that allows me space to show up and also recharge at the same time, because that's really the way women were designed. Wow. That makes so much sense because Mm -hmm. I know when I first heard about batching and also thinking about creating content, I first started with okay, well, Friday is going to be my day. Every Friday Mm -hmm. is going to be my day. Why create stuff? And I'm going to batch it on a Friday. But that was like four Fridays. And then when I started the podcast was the first time that I batched because I launched with 10 episodes. So I was Uh batching like crazy and I planned everything out. And that was so much easier. And then from that point onward, I was like, oh, I think that's the way to do it. Like more just part of the month, that's where you do your planning and batching Mm -hmm. and all of that. And then you can put your feet up later on. Yes. Because that's what time blocking usually looks like for people, Mm -hmm. right? It's like on Fridays, I'm going to do podcasts Friday mornings every morning, but who you are and how you show up every Friday is going to be different based on where those energy levels are and where your hormones are at. So, you know, day seven, you might be coming off of your menstrual cycle headed into that uh, follicular phase and your estrogen is climbing and estrogen makes you feel really great. You feel really powerful. You feel like you want to show up. You're doing really great. That's on day seven ish, right? Like everybody cycles a little bit different, but then on day 21, when you're headed into that luteal phase and progesterone's dominant, you don't want to show up on camera or audio. Like you want to curl into bed and maybe just plug away in the back end. And maybe you don't even want to show up in your business at all. And so to have those that to have just that plain Friday to Friday to Friday, I'm going to do podcasts. There's going to be some weeks where you feel it and you feel like you crush it and other weeks when you don't. So Mm -hmm. I really try to teach my clients using cycle blocking. So kind of the same concept of batching spots in your calendar, but like maybe that podcast slot, if you want to keep a podcast slot, maybe one week is recording and one week is writing the email that is going to go out about it or the social content about it. And one week, maybe you're scheduling it in your email provider or like whatever, like the different parts, you could still create that one spot or you could just totally do it different. And like just this one week is all about the podcast. And I'm just going to record all week in this one, you know, like 8 a.m., Monday through Friday, this one week, I'm going to record podcast episodes or however you want to structure it, but really looking at the month as a change rather than week to week to week or day to day, because we are not the same every single day. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. true. That's for sure. Yeah. And what about as you get older? Does Mm -hmm. that would shift, wouldn't it? Because you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as you get older and your hormones change or your postpartum or breastfeeding or hysterectomy or irregular cycles, like I get all those questions because people are always like, okay, well that makes sense. But what if, and really, I think it comes down to the fact that we as women are just made to cycle. We are made in that rhythm. And so regardless, if you actually have a bleeding cycle or not, most women I know 
still feel much better when they function in the same rhythm. So a friend of mine has had a hysterectomy. She told me, she's like, there's one week every single month. I can feel it. Even though I'm not bleeding, I, these same patterns that you're telling me, I still feel them. I still feel the same way. So it's like, it, it almost is, I think beyond just the hormones, the hormones make it great and, and wonderful. We can tap into it. But I think just as humans, as women, we were made to cycle. Even my six-year-old daughter, right? There's some weeks she is golden. She's amazing and wonderful and this like sweet child. She wants to help. And other weeks she is not so much. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to say double child, but sometimes it feels like that, right? And you can see like even those same patterns in her. And I know my six-year-old is not having hormone cycles. So I really do think as human beings, we are. And so What I oftentimes recommend for women that are like that, that have no cycle or absent or birth control or something that makes your cycle not super predictable is to use the moon. And so if you follow the moon, which has a 28 day cycle, just like, like the standard normal, like menstrual cycle is that your body starts to learn and adjust, right? It may not know right off the bat and things might feel a little bit wonky. It may not feel like your energy totally aligns with it. But over time, your body starts to learn and because your body is smart and just like, you know, like intermittent fasting, if you didn't, if you didn't eat in the morning at eight o'clock every single day, or if you did, and then all of a sudden you stopped and you didn't eat until noon, your body's going to send you hunger cues at eight o'clock for a little while. And the longer you go without giving it food at eight o'clock, it's going to stop sending you those hunger cues because it's going to learn, okay, we don't eat until noon. So your body adjusts and learns based on the habits that you give it. So if you start using the moon as this way of you know, mapping out your calendar and mapping out your life, your body starts to learn to adjust to that. And it really helps to just have this really great balance of having time that's more extroverted, high times that's introverted, time that allows you to go hard in your business, time to recharge and retreat and like reprieve yourself. And it just has this ebb and flow, which I think is what most women in business end up doing is burning out because it's pushing, pushing, pushing all the time. And that recharge and retrieve and retreat and all those things is part of what's lacking for so many women. Interesting. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So when you're planning things <laughs> out, then let's say, you know, cause we're in the online space and, mm-hmm. you know, we do launches and those can be really exhausting. You're exerting a lot of energy, So you really want to consider Mm -hmm. when you're planning those launch dates, don't you? Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If you launch in the middle of your menstrual cycle, it's going to be really hard. (laughs) It's going to be really hard, right? Like, I mean, just physically your body's drained. It's losing a lot of blood and just energetically you're feeling really low. And so if you're doing that, you're going to, it's, you're just like, we went back to that same idea of you feel more light, you feel more in in your power when you're in those, those appropriate phases. And so if you're not matching up your cycle with your, your launch, then you definitely are going to feel it versus those times where you get on, you're like, I crushed it. I was on top of my game. I felt like I communicated so well. I connected with the audience Mm. and all of those things just become so much easier. It feels less forced. Now it's going to happen. There's going to be times like my cycle showed up really like super early in my last launch (laughs) And I used it as like a teaching tool. I'm like, here's where I'm at. And this is not where I wanted to be and not how I planned it, but it's the way my body went. And so here's how I'm adapting. Here is how I'm adjusting. And because they were going to have those times too. But even just for me looking at the strategy of live launching and or the the cycle of launching definitely follows kind of that same pattern too right like mm-hmm. we have this phase where we're working really hard and we're on the back end putting all the pieces together and we're marketing and we're talking and we're on podcasts and we're doing all this thing reaching to this place of like a climax of connection and uh, connecting and getting to know our audience and being really present with them And then after when carts closed, it's like, oh, I can take a little break now. And so I even find I really like that launch method, like that Mm -hmm. style, because it allows me to go through all of those different phases and not feel like I have to be on or accepting new clients or all these things all the time. So I mean, not everybody 
prefers that way. But for me, I've even noticed like in that season or looking at how I launch and like those patterns of my business in a bigger, grander scheme, not just in the month, really help me feel more rejuvenated and feel more refreshed and feel like I can show up fully in those different seasons, knowing like this is a hundred percent what I'm focusing on right now. Mm, So good. Mm -hmm. So then what becomes possible if you start planning things according to your cycle, can you start to see like massive growth? Like Mm -hmm. when you start to make those shifts? Yeah, a hundred percent. So I feel like it, it impacts your revenue, right? Because you're able to connect with your people better. You're able to actually communicate with them and articulate with them so much differently. And like you said, that magnet or like, oh, it's almost like magnetic, right? Yeah, people like feel they, that energy. They can, yeah, they can feel the energy. Yeah. So if you're feeling mm-hmm. low energy because your body's working overtime because you're in your cycle, that mm-hmm. part of your cycle, then people can sense that. Yeah. 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 So I feel I have found that it's been easier to attract new clients. It's been easier to like my social following has grown significantly since I've really been tapping into it. There's, you know, your, my revenue has significantly increased. Like there's so many different aspects that allow you to really grow without feeling like you're working quite as hard. So I know for me, I was able to cut down. In fact, right now, especially over summer with my kids at home, I'm working like three hours a week. It's about the most I can fit in right now just because of life and kids and home and whatnot. And I still feel like my business is still moving forward because I know how to really use those three hours. Those three hours are intentional. They're not just wasted. I know this is where I'm prime to get stuff done based on my cycle. So I'm going to focus in on those tasks right now. And then, you know, when life happens and my kids go back to school, I'll have a few more days. But even then, I really am only working on my business two and a half days a week. So I'm able to really fully get everything done I need to get done in my business in those two and a half days because I'm operating in alignment with where my cycle's at. So it's taking less time versus, you know, like that time you sit down and you're like, want to write an email or a sales Mm -hmm. page or something. And you feel like you just stare at the screen, like the words just don't come and they're not there. And you're just waiting like at that blank cursor, or maybe you try rewriting and rewriting and rewriting versus those times when you get into the flow and you feel like the words just come and they just, you feel like, gosh, that was so connective and so magnetic. That's the power of this, right? Mm -hmm. Like you save that time instead of trying to force yourself to get something done just because you have to get it checked off the to-do list. When you do it in that phase that you feel most primed for that, you're going to feel in that flow and it's going to go so much faster and saving you time and money in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And you know, what you're doing is so great because it's really uplifting women and, and making it uh, okay to get in touch with what's going on that Mm -hmm. we are literally different makeup to men. And so it makes sense that we would work differently. Yeah. It must be very empowering. And I'm sure you hear from probably a lot of women who thank you and are really appreciative of what you're doing because you're mm-hmm. you're standing up and you're sharing with something that probably a lot of people don't talk about. Mm-mm. It's so true. No, nobody really. I'm like, I didn't ever really learn much about my period when I was a kid. Certainly did not learn about how it impacts me throughout the month. It was just that one week. And I'm culturally around the world, it's predominantly seen as something pretty shameful and something that you keep hidden. You don't talk about it. You ignore it or you try to just get through it. And instead, a lot of my clients have found that it becomes one of their greatest assets. It becomes like a superpower because they now are in alignment with each of those different phases and it becomes empowering instead of this dreaded time. So it really does make such a huge difference when we just start talking about it. And most women, yeah, have never heard about it. Don't talk about it. Or it's seen as this like hush, hush kind of conversation. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm all about um, speaking with people who are visionaries within their their field, their expertise, and mm-hmm. really becoming 
thought leaders in the world. And that's exactly what you're doing. And you should be super excited. It's like so awesome to know that yeah. you're talking about stuff that people don't usually talk about and mm -hmm. making it more comfortable to talk about. It's awesome. <laughs> I, it's I even... I I even joke about the fact that like I, when I, when I had my oldest daughter, I got a menstrual cup instead of tampons. And I was so excited that I never had to go to the grocery store and buy tampons again, because I was so embarrassed and mortified to actually go through the checkout camera, mm -hmm. with like tampons or pads. And now to be, this is where I'm talking. This is what I'm speaking. It's like crazy. Like you said, just to find your voice and to be able to yeah. feel in that alignment to see that I would never have predicted that this was the journey I would go on. So let's talk about your voice yeah. because you've had a massive shift with your voice. Mm -hmm. Talk to, to me about where you were when we first met each other. Cause you're very different now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I was very hesitant and very unsure of how I wanted to speak and how I wanted to show up online. I knew the message and I knew what I wanted to, but I was definitely hiding behind the reels. So I remember you mm. recorded your video initially about, you know, pointing and dancing on reels. And I saw that and I was like, gosh, <laughs> that it, it is so true. Like I never... <laughs> Even in stories, I was not talking on camera. I rarely showed my face in stories. I would, you know, just show snippets of my life. I was using quotes and things like that in my feed. I was rarely showing up live. Like all of those things, I, go, I was hiding behind the camera in a sense or the still frames. Like I was doing still shot camera, but I wasn't actually vocal on camera hardly at mm. all. And it was funny as I was had my podcast for years, but that felt so different to me than actually showing up on social media. So for me, that was a big part of why I joined in was, or I, what I, th I didn't know it. I don't think at the beginning, but I think that was what I needed was so much mm. of that showing up on being okay, speaking in my voice and not just the message voice, but like actually speaking. And so for me, that was the biggest journey. I think that one of the challenges you gave us in the very beginning was to just show up vocally somewhere online every single day. Yeah. And in that was kind of around the time I started on TikTok. And so I've watched this just progression of like, I don't care if it's messy. I don't care if it, if I stumble over my words, which I was so worried about being perfect all the time mm -hmm. that the stumbling over my words and being messy didn't feel okay to me. I wanted to show up looking really great and polished. So I think that's been the biggest transformation and journey for me is just being willing to be real, be authentic just speak up because somebody needs to hear it messy. Somebody needs to hear it however you're going to say it. And in the bigger scheme of things, like me not showing up and saying it, some people weren't hearing the message at all. And That's so it. I think that was the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. And now now you're speaking up all the time. And so it's mm -hmm. people all, all over the world can hear mm -hmm. it. Very much yeah. needed. And yeah. I'm so glad that you are using your voice more and more. And you can see that your confidence has grown. It really is. It's one of those skills that the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So much so. Yeah. 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 And I've I've come to this place of like really challenging myself. I think it was, I don't remember exactly when, but in the last like four or five months, I was like, I just need to do better about being on camera by myself. Like that was on, on my own, like little reel or my stories or things like that became so much easier. And so it became like, how can I challenge myself even more? So I started trying to record all my solo podcasts with just video, like just yeah. me in the video, you know, and that was a huge, huge out of my comfort zone initially. And then now it's become a little bit more easy. It's not feeling so awkward for me to just talk to the camera by myself. And so yeah. I think like you said, the more you do it and the more you just continue to stretch outside of that comfort zone, the more you just continue to expand those skills. And you know, what's really great about recording is you can always re-record. If you go, mm -hmm. oh, that wasn't so good. You can just do it again. But, and the more you do it, you'll find it'll take less takes. Like yeah. at first people are like, oh my gosh, I, I took like 50 takes. This yes. is going to take me forever. Okay, fine. But you're learning in that process. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it will 
get easier and easier and you'll start to get that flow and that you'll you'll start to find your style as well mm-hmm. of creating content which works for you to camera using your voice uh, the thing i really love and it's is very much like you know the youtube and the tiktok way is these really short clips so it works wonders you know when you've got your messaging and you know exactly what you want to say you don't have to feel like you have to do it in one take you can do yeah. small little snippets and that becomes really interesting for your audience as well to keep them captivated and engaged in what you're mm-hmm. saying and so short little snippets all together mm-hmm. um do you watch back your stuff ever do you review it Um, sometimes I do. I feel like, especially like the smaller clips. And I think, honestly, I will say that was one of the biggest breakthroughs I think I had going through your program is because I felt like even my podcast, I would try to record the whole thing without stopping the whole thing without making blunders or things like that. I tried to, to consult. And I think that in alone was so overwhelming to think about because it's such a big project. It's such a big Mm. thing. And so the shorter clips has made a huge difference. And then definitely like in the shorter reels and the shorter TikToks and things like that and getting super concise has, I watched those for sure. And I've started listening back to some of my podcast episodes, Mm. you know, just periodically when I'm driving in the car and things like that and trying to listen in on like, Oh, I don't like the way I did that. Or that sounded really great. Or there was an episode that I recorded out of the wrong phase of my cycle just because I had to get one done. And it took me like six hours to record oh, this wow. one 20 minute episode. I was so mad <laughs> and it felt, it felt so bad to me. Like I felt like I did such a horrible job. I felt like I was stumbling over my words. I felt like my thoughts were all over the place. Mm-hmm. And then when I listened back to it on the, actually after it aired, cause I was like, I'm just done. I was like, it wasn't actually quite so bad as I thought it was. <laughs> it actually flowed so much seamlessly. So that's yeah, the, the thing. Yeah, yeah. That's what's so fascinating is we, when we're, when you're recording content, whether it's podcast or uh visual video, whatever you are your worst critic in that moment. Mm-hmm. And it really is the importance of the watch back because you, you can't always like in a podcast hear how it's perceived on the other end. And so you might think it's the worst thing in the world, but then you watch it back and you're like, it's actually all right. Yeah. 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 Funny. And that episode I did, I got like multiple people sending me messages saying this was the best episode. I needed this. And I was like, oh my gosh, to think I almost didn't put it out there because I was so frustrated with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's something else. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, I had another question and it just escaped my mind. What was it? Something about the podcast and I can't remember. Um, anyway, so my question next is because you are in the US. Mm-hmm. I'm in Australia. Do you find that you're working mostly with a United States audience, or have you now started to expand globally? Hmm. You know, it's funny. I actually have quite a few UK clients and I love working with my UK clients. I've had a few Australian clients in the past, but most, I would say most of the clients that I work with right now are North America. So both US and Canada and the UK, those tend to be my, my hot spots for clients right now. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's, let's expand that baby. Let's yeah. make you global. Yeah, definitely. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all down for that. <laughs> yeah. Although well, time, time zones are the only hiccup mm, to that. It gets harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but, that is true. The, the time yeah. zones is, but you know, uh, look, I, I'm a prime example. I, I will show up sometimes on a zoom call at four o'clock in the morning, if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not always, I, not always, but sometimes. Yes, I know. I, I, there was one time I had a client that showed up at like three o'clock in the morning. I was like, this is not an important enough call. Just go back to bed. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk yeah, about exactly. this later. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, the only trick is to, 
it, when you start expanding globally is to go, okay, what's their time zone? H- how does mm-hmm. that relate to mine? And can we find that sweet spot where mm-hmm. it's not too early for them or me? It's not too late for them or me. And usually you can find it, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's what you're doing definitely needs to go global. So I'm going to mm-hmm. push you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll, t- I'll take I'll take that push. I'll let All you my that. Australian listeners, please. <laughs> Where can people find you? Yeah, so the podcast is a great place. It's the Cycle Advantage over there. You can also find us at thecycleadvantage.com on social. It's just my first and last name, so Renee Fick. Spelled a little bit funny, so I'm sure you'll have those sh- linked well, up in the show in the notes show and notes. things like that. Yeah, yeah, because it's 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 never spelled right. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. So, but yeah, uh, those are the probably those are the great places to find me. All right, well, get get ready for for all the Australians to be yeah knocking on your door. There you uh, go. It, maybe I'll, I'm hosting a retreat in San Diego in April. Maybe one of these days I can host a retreat down in Australia with you. Down under. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. need to have a next level down under one of these days. Be, Wouldn't that be, be so, fun. so good? Yes. So good. Uh, oh, yes. Well, you know, James always says he, he said on one of his podcasts that he wanted to come to Australia. Really? Yeah, I remember. I think it was last year on one of his podcasts. He mentioned that. So maybe we have to do a next level retreat over here. It might be a really nice business expense to come visit. That's it. <laughs> I will show you the lay of the land. There we you go. Can, we'll do we that. Can climb the Harbor Bridge. We can, you know, go for a nice uh, cruise along the the Sydney Harbor to the Opera House. <laughs> it's magnificent. Sounds a lovely, lovely. I will be there. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brene. It's been such a joy to catch up with you and hear more about what you do and the fact that you're sharing such a great message with the world. Any last um, words of wisdom for all the the women out there in the world? No, I think, well, the one last little thing I would leave you is just that idea of like trusting your body and trusting yourself and what's good and right for you, because that's the key gateway, I think, to the growth that you're looking for, regardless if it's business or if it's in life or if it's in voice or wherever it is, is that coming back to yourself and listening to what's good and right for you and your body is going to, it's never going to steer you wrong. So I would say that's my last little parting word. Oh, that's great. Good parting yeah. words. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. And everyone, make sure to check out Renee and Cycle Advantage. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. And hey, if you are ready to start unlocking the power in your voice to be seen and heard and be known as the authority in what you do, then I invite you to book a call with me. Head over to katherinebeck.com forward slash amplify and we can get started. Thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you back here next time on the Voice of Your Brand podcast.